Hey everyone, today I'm going to make some cards using the Jess Crafts 12 by 12 template number two. I'm actually using a Kaiser Craft paper pad. Uh, it is called Mermaids and it has 36 12 by 12 pattern papers. I'm also using standard white A2 card bases for the cards. These are going to be super quick to make and literally I need to cut down the cutter parts, create a backing panel that's five and a quarter by four, and then those thinner strips that you see on the right will add a decorative element to the top part of the card. I then need to figure out what is my approach going to be for sentiments. Let's get started. The first thing I'm doing is cutting down the pattern paper to create the backing panels. These are five and a quarter by four inches. I've used four different pattern papers to create these parts of the design and then two sheets of 12 cutter parts. This means that I'll be creating 24 cards in total and all of the pattern papers match really well because they've all come from exactly the same paper pad. So all of that thinking has already been done by the designers. The Kaiser Craft paper pads are only single sided and while that does mean you've got some limitations sometimes if you're wanting to use less paper and use both sides for a card sketch. I do find that I love this sometimes because if there's a paper design that I love and they're both on the opposite side, I feel like I'm torn about which one to use. So uh, for these paper pads, I don't have that problem. It's just a matter of uh, running through and matching up which papers I'm going to use for which uh, card designs. Overall, it took me about 90 minutes to create this set of 24 cards. I've had a few people ask me if I enjoy the process of creating multiples of the same thing, and I really do. I find it kind of therapeutic, just chopping up the paper, creating the little piles, and then deciding which color is going to go with which. And then because I have my ATG, I just find that, you know, quite a quick process to actually put them all together. And then when I'm creating a bundle of cards that I know are going to go to a good cause and that the papers that I have in my stash are going to be used up, um, then that's something that I really enjoy also. I'm now moving on to the mermaid cutter parts. These are so super cute and they really do use all of the different color tones of the paper pad. So you can see the teals and the pinks and the navies all working really well together. And then the mermaids themselves are really quite different. There's some with brown hair, some with teal hair, some with pink hair. And there's lots of different skin tones in here as well, which I think is really, really unique about uh, Kaiser Craft. They often have a lot of diversity in uh, their designs, which I love to see. This is excellent. I love this paper pad. After I've chopped all of these uh, cutter parts and mermaids up, I'm then going to do something that I don't normally do. And I'm going to try and cut apart the mats and attach the mermaids without doing my attach first trim later. I'm going to create the mats in the actual size intended and then see if I can actually line up the cutter parts without having to trim uh, them down and do a second pass through my uh, trimmer. Uh, this is just an experiment. I normally do it the other way. I find that it works well for me. Um, but I have seen Jess do it this way quite successfully. So I thought maybe because these are a larger size and they've got quite a forgiving uh, mat around it that it would work. So I'm chopping all of these up out of my white cardstock. I do use like a cheap 200 GSM cardstock. I'll link it down below. I get it from a store called Officeworks in Australia. It's just a standard stationery store that sells paper by the ream, many, many different kinds. Uh, and it, it's quite affordable and it's got a decent weight to it for mats. I'm using it rather than using something light like standard paper or copy paper. Uh, it works really well. I also sometimes use it for sentiments as well. So all these little leftover pieces here, I'll either use to stack behind the cutter parts later in the video, or I'll put them aside and then just stamp a whole bunch of happy birthday sentiments or thank you sentiments or encouragement messages and then use them on a future project. So none of those little cutoffs that you see down the bottom are going to go to waste. They'll either get used for this project or for another one down the track. This is where I'm working with my ATG to attach to the matting layer. Now I have trimmed this down significantly. I haven't shown all of it. It's very straightforward, but I was very surprised. I was very successful in lining these up and I think there was three or four where I trimmed them down after the fact. So 
I think for matting layers that are big like this, I might do it this way moving forward. We will, we will see. Anything smaller, I'm hopeless, but a three by four, I seem to be able to make that work. The next step is literally attaching that uh, backing panel, as I like to call it. It's just the piece of paper, pattern paper that was five and a quarter by four that we chopped up earlier, just layering them straight onto my A2 uh, card bases. There are 24 to do, so this takes a little while, and I just do them in batches. I think I did six at a time. This was quite straightforward, and we're nearly done. I just wanted to give a huge thank you to anyone who subscribed to my channel recently. I did put a call out because I was trying to get to 700 subs by the end of April, and I managed to do that by, I think, the 10th of April. So I'm not sure what my next target should be, Ultimately, I want to get to over a thousand subscribers. That's the next big milestone for any YouTube creator. But maybe I'll try and target 800 by the end of April and see how I go with that one. You never know. Okay, I'm moving on to the decorative element for the back of the card. This goes behind the mermaid and the feature. I'm using some strips of white that I've cut to a particular width, but I haven't worried about the end and chopping it to make it perfect. Because what I find is if I'm creating these at the beginning and attaching the pattern paper, it's then really easy to trim it down so that the backing or the matting layer and the pattern paper themselves are a perfect lineup and you don't have that couple of millimeter um, miss that sometimes happens when you're trying to get your components ready for the cards. The next step is to start compiling them. And you can see on the top right that I've already done three of the six piles. So 18 cards are already done. I'm just showing you the last six. I've put the ATG on the back of the strips and I'm doing these mass production style, lining them up. I, I'm not putting them in the perfect spot every time, just in that bottom third of the card. I'm then adding some of my liquid glue and using, you can see my tub of just my scrap paper. I've doubled that up to use as a, an alternative to foam tape, just to give um, a little bit of height to the, the feature on the card, which is these mermaids on top. And also to make sure that there's no noticeable dip when it goes over the top of that strip of pattern paper through the middle. These do look like a red hot mess underneath the cutter parts, but no one is ever going to see it. And I do find that I like using the, the scrap pieces of pattern paper so they're not going to waste. If I do have really small elements though, I do throw them into my recycling. So everything either gets recycled or it gets used in these cards. The next step is the most satisfying part for me. And that's when you put uh, a really pretty element on top of that red hot mess below it and no one can see it and it's all hidden uh, and the card is closer to complete. I haven't done the sentiments yet, they will come up next, but I do have 24 panels with mermaids on them that are really close to being done. For the sentiments, I used onyx black ink for the stamping and I used a very simple happy birthday onto some white cardstock. I have not even matted these. I like that it's not including any bulk or another element to the card. And what I'm doing here, it might seem a little bit strange, but I'm running through and I'm adding the happy birthday to all of the cards where I could add the happy birthday sentiment without it being over the top of the mermaid. So in some instances, the mermaids themselves had really long tails and we're covering the whole cut apart element. Where that was the case, I had to put a bit more thought into where I put the happy birthday. So I did all of those last. In the end, I created 24 cards using four sheets of 12 by 12 pattern paper and two sheets of 12 by 12 cut aparts with the three by four mermaid designs. Uh, so from six pieces of paper, I got 24 cards using the 12 by 12 template number two from Jess Crafts. I've put a couple of videos here that I think you might also enjoy. Have a great day.